And now, but the devil isn't satisfied with that. So the devil says, listen, we got to keep Jesus from that house. Why? Because if he gets there, then she, this little girl is going to come back from the dead, and it's going to be just all glory to God all over again. So we got to stop him. So quick, let's kill her, and then send some servants out there, send some people to go tell Jairus to forget it. But now notice, they didn't go to Jesus and say, uh, Jesus, don't, don't, don't do this. Uh, you know, Jairus, he's out of his mind right now because his daughter's dead. It's not good. So just, you don't need to come. They didn't go to Jesus. Why? Because they knew, the devil knew, <laughs> you're wasting your time. So what did he do? He hit the weakest link. He hit the person involved. He hit the father, the father of the girl. He hit the father and said, don't trouble him. Your daughter's dead. Why? Because that grief would hit. And now, but now notice, Jesus didn't say, don't grieve. He said, don't fear. What, fear what? Because he had the, the fear aspect that is the basis of this. That he would fear that what he had asked wouldn't happen. Once he heard it was too late. See, too late for man is not too late for God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you've got to stretch your too late to match God's, not yours. Now watch. And when he heard that, he said, Thy daughter's dead, trouble not the master. He said, Fear not, believe only. Now what does that mean? What is that to you? How would you do? Well, I don't ever want to be in a place like this. I hope you're not. I have been. I had one daughter die. We buried her. I had another daughter die from a second floor window, hit the ground, and was dead for 45 minutes. This was eight years later. That time it ended different. Why? Because after we buried the first one, we said, never again. And so for 45 minutes, I was commanding, you will live and not die. You will live and not die. In the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. And that's the only words that ever came out of my mouth. And in 45 minutes, she was alive again. And so we've been there. See, I'm not telling you anything that's theory. Right? I'm not preaching to you from a degree of theology. I'm telling you what we've experienced, what we've seen, what we know works. And I can't get it across strong enough. If I could, listen, I'm not a yelling person. But if it would get across to you better, I would do that. But I couldn't yell loud enough to emphasize it strong enough as it is written. So I'm, I'm saying it in a way that hopefully it'll make you think and get down inside of you. See, because faith is not the shout. Faith is digging your heels in, gritting your teeth, and standing and saying, don't care what they say, don't care what I see, don't care what goes on, don't care who calls me crazy, this is how it will end. And then you don't bow and you don't bend, and you don't break away from that. You don't back off. Amen. You keep moving forward. You keep your stand of faith. When you do that, God will stand with you. All he's looking for is a person in whom he can show himself strong. He is looking for a person to say, I will not go to the right nor to the left. This, it is written. And it shall be so. That's what he's looking for. But now let me tell you, on the other hand, on the devil's side, the devil's going to do probing attacks. He's going to tell you everything he can. He's going to hit you every way he can. You're going to, and, and it could be in the area of sickness. And you can say, you know, I just don't feel right. So you go to the doctor and they run a test and they come back. Oh, it's terrible. Hmm. It's bad. And they're going to try to get you to believe how bad it is. Because the minute you agree with them, it just got worse. Why? Because you have laid down your defenses. You've laid down your will. And now you're agreeing with them. Why? Because all they had to do was say, oh, well, see the test? And yet, do you know how many tests are wrong? How many tests they show you, which was actually the results of somebody else's test, and they made a mistake? 30% of what I deal with is what doctors messed up. That's a fact. And people come to me and say, can you help me? The doctor did this. He's supposed to do that. And this is the way it ended up. And we're believing God to fix what doctors messed up. Nothing against doctors. Most of them, you know, try to do some good and that kind of stuff. But all I'm saying is that 
you have to decide who you're going to believe. And then maybe we pray, and you think everything's going to be great. And it will at the end. But it's that in the meantime that you have to decide where you're going to stand. And usually in the meantime, as soon as we decide on something and you're like, okay, it's done. Then all of a sudden, there's another report. Somebody's going to come. It's, if it's sickness, there's going to be a doctor's report. Oh, it's worse than we thought. Oh, we found it in more places. It looks like it's already spread. It looks worse than this. We've never seen anybody recover from this. I mean, they're going to tell you all kinds of stuff. And I'm not saying they're lying. I'm just saying they don't know the degree of power that we have available. But you're going to have to decide where you're going to stand. You're going to have to decide at what point are you shaken? At what point do you give up? At what point do you go along with them and agree with them? Because if any two agree... See, everybody thinks that's just in prayer. Jesus didn't say... Oh, well, in prayer, now if we're talking prayer, then if any two agree, this is what... No, he said, if any two agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Isn't that right? So who are you going to agree with? You know, the smart person's going to agree with God because that's how you want things to end up. 